What's up, my wizards? It's Dev from SBMTG on the YouTube.com. You know, but now we like magic. And today, a long-awaited competitive deck tech. This is Jund, because I know how you Jund people like to Jund folks out. Or Yund if you're hardcore. But anyway, Jund is the green, red, and black color combination that's historically known as just being a solid mid-range deck that plays all the best cards in its colors, synergy be damned. And this deck is no different. We're just looking to identify the best cards at 2, 3, 4, 5 drop, and so on, and just play those. Who cares about the synergy? We just want to play the best cards. Let's start with the creatures in the deck as usual, and we'll start from the low end of the curve and work our way up here. First of all, at the low end of the curve, I want to play two really, really good green creatures that have withstood the test of time and just been great for like a really long time at this point. I'm talking, of course, about four Sylvan Advocates and four Tylus Trackers. I'll play play sets of both of these here, and they really speak to the mid-range nature of the deck. Both of these are fine, sort of on curve. I feel like Sylvan Advocate is above curve um, for their mana costs, but they get way better as the game goes on. Sylvan Advocate can be a 4-5 and make our creature lands better, and Tireless Tracker is especially good as the game goes on. Once you get into the mid to late game, Tracker can get huge, draw you a bunch of cards, and multiples of them are always good too. So I'm going to reserve eight slots so we can play play sets of both of these really, really good creatures. You know, we're not going to find too many more better options at two or three mana creature-wise than these guys. Moving on up the curve, I'm going to play two copies of Kalidus in the deck for all the usual reasons, just like Sylvan Advocate and Tireless Tracker. Card's been around for a while, but it's still really, really strong, as evidenced by the fact that it's sticking around a, you know, 20-ish dollar price tag. People still love Kalidus. For good reason, we're removing a lot of creatures in this deck, between the spells and the planeswalkers that remove creatures. So, Kalidus is just amazing, you know. We get to exile their dudes, including things like Scrap Deep Scrounger that we don't want coming back. And then, we get creatures of our own. Not to mention that Kalidus can just block other aggro decks, like, really, really, really well, you know. Um, making up three points of life at the very least, and usually eating a small dude if they choose to attack. This thing is a really good, just, you know, deterrent wall against aggro decks. So, Kalidus is good for a lot of reasons and can also get really big the later the game goes on. You'll see that as a theme in this deck. The more the game goes on, the better we get, and Kalidus is part of that. Now, earlier I said we don't have a whole lot of synergies in the deck, but there are some that are sort of naturally occurring. You know, Sylvan Advocate, Hissing Quagmire, Tyler's Tracker, Evolving Wilds, and Noxious Gear Hulk, which you're playing a one of, and Kalidus is a pretty good combo. You know, you'll play your Noxious Gear Hulk with your Kalidus in play, you'll kill one of their dudes, you'll exile it, and you'll get a 2-2. Two -two. That's really good um, for six mana, and you get a huge body on top of it um, that has an ability too. So, like, Noxious Gear Hulk is good whether you have Kalidus in play or not, but it's especially good when you do have a Kalidus, so there's a synergy right there. But even if you don't, just the one of Silver Bullet um, Noxious Gear Hulk is all I really want. We've got a fair amount of ways to draw cards, so in a game that goes long, which if you haven't noticed, because I haven't already said it a thousand times, we're trying to go a little long <laughs> in this mid-range deck. So you're pretty um, likely to draw into your Noxious Gear Hulk at some point during the game, and no matter when you draw it, it's definitely a good card. I'm going to play a two of Cultivator's Caravan in the deck, which isn't really a creature, but I always like to do vehicles with the creatures. Um, now, I don't think 11 total creatures is enough to play the four of Smuggler's Copter that you might want to play, but I do think it's enough to play a two of Cultivator's Caravan, especially considering, like, even if we never make it a creature and swing with it, still not bad, you know? Three mana or mana rock that fixes our mana however we want to do it, ramps us a turn, that'll get us to Noxious Gear Hulk faster, five mana Planeswalkers faster, that's always good, and if we can crew it, like, if we don't want to swing with a Tireless Tracker or something, we just want to keep making it bigger drawn cards, then we can just use the Tireless Tracker to crew this, swing in for five points of damage. It's really, really good. So lots of good things about um, about Caravan. Not to mention that it's an artifact, and even though we're not playing anything Delirium in the main deck, I am playing two Ishkana in the board. So I want to be able to activate Delirium somewhere or another, and this is an artifact. That can help us do that. So this thing fills a lot of different holes and niches in the deck, and I feel like it's worth playing the two of. We're playing nine total planeswalkers in this, again, mid-range deck, you know, turns three, four, five. We want to be playing really good cards, and planeswalkers all cost three, four, and five mana. Look at that. And they're all really good, so let's play some. Starting with the best one, three copies of Liliana the Last Hug. Obviously, in this competitive, non-budget deck, and I'm sorry, she's still like 40 bucks. <laughs> it's not my fault. Um, but there's a reason for that. Green Black Delirium might be possibly the best deck in the format. 
which features very heavily in that. Um, and just like that deck, we are playing a Delirium theme, um, but it's in the sideboard, and it's just Iskana. But we can use her to activate Delirium more easily. That's a thing. But mostly, we're going to be playing her on turn three, hopefully. And, you know, staving off small aggro dudes, that's always good. We can kill certain small creatures with this. Um, but... Also important is that in the mid game, this will get creatures back for us. You know, this is sort of part of the long end strategy. Early game pick off dudes, late game get back dudes that they've picked off. And if you can ultimate her, you kind of win the game as long as you can hold down the fort for a couple of turns. And happens a lot, turns out. If you can just protect your Liliana until she gets to ultimate, you've got the ultimate inevitability at that point. I'm playing two copies of Chandra Torture Defiance, who has found her way into a deck. Look at that, lady. Here you are. Um, obviously, the card is still in demand because it's still just under a $20 price tag, but that is nothing compared to the $50, $60, and even $70 pre-orders that we saw on Chandra before the set came out. Chandra has not lived up to expectations so far. She's got plenty of time to do it, but in this deck, pretty darn good fit. You know, we're looking for a good format of Planeswalker with a lot of different things it can do. Bingo! We have Chandra right here. You know, she can kill creatures. That's awesome. She can draw cards. That's pretty awesome. She can also ramp if we want her to, fix our mana a little bit. That's pretty cool. And her ultimate, if you get it off, will win you the game, just like Liliana's, within a couple of turns, you know? And at that point, one of the best things um, that happens a lot, actually, is that once you get off Chandra's ultimate, you can then just start popping clues that you've gotten from your tireless tracker and playing spells and just win the game. Happens! But mostly we're going to be using Chandra to either get card advantage or kill creatures. Two things that she's really, really, really good at. I don't know why Chandra hasn't gotten quite the fair shake yet. We just haven't had the deck for her as of yet, but it will happen. So at this sort of low-ish price, you might want to go ahead and get your Chandra's because she could jump back up once we experience either a rotation or another set dropping that puts her in a better position. I do think this card is very good and I've enjoyed playing with it quite a bit. We just have to find the right deck and I think this might be it. She fits very, very well in here and just is very, just practically useful. Not to mention I've just won the game a couple times off her ultimate. It's really not hard. But anyway, moving on here. We've got one copy of Arlen Cord in the main deck because I want to play Arlen Cord and there's not really a whole lot of more reasons <laughs> than that, you know. But Arlen Cord is a creature factory. That's pretty good. And once she flips over, she can kill creatures. That's cool. If we've got a small army of dudes out at any point, she can, you know, anthem them all and give them abilities. That's pretty awesome, too. Just Arlen has six different abilities, which is really, really nice. Um, but mostly we're going to be using her to create 2-2 two -two wolves and lightning bolt stuff. But that's all we really need her for, you know? Early game, well, the, day, the turn we play her, she can spit out a little guy, help block, protect her, that's cool. And then once she transforms, you know, you bolt a guy, flip her back over, make a wolf. That's how I use Arlen nine times out of ten, is just wolf bolt, wolf bolt until she's dead. We're playing two copies of Nissa Vital Force in the deck. You guys know by now, if you watch the channel, this is one of my pet cards. I really, really like Nissa Vital Force. Um, especially in this deck, you know, this is yet another way, just like Liliana, to get cards back from the graveyard. And this actually can get Liliana's back from the graveyard that they've killed, which is cool. It can get Noxious Gearholtz back from the graveyard if they kill those, Tylus Trackers, Kalidus, whatever, you know. So, and other Planeswalkers, which is really one of the best functions of the card in this deck is to get Planeswalkers back that have died. Um, so she got that going for you. Not to mention one of the easiest ultimates in standard right now to get off, other than, you know, Gideon or Chandra Flame Caller. This is a very, very easy ultimate, and once we get into the long game, if we've got a few turns to work with her ultimate, that'll lead to a bunch of card advantage. So, love everything about Nissa. if people should start playing her. And I'll finish off the walkers with just one copy of Obnixilis Reignited, because I really like all the utility that this card brings. You know, drawing cards is awesome, killing creatures is awesome, and the ultimate is, again, inevitability. So, I like everything about Obnix, you know, we're playing Oath of Nissa. we're more likely to draw into him even though we're playing one. So I'll, you know, I feel like it's worth making room for the one of Bob Nixillis in the deck. I just love unconditional creature kill. No matter what, that's awesome. And drawing cards is great as well, so yes. I'm doing a lot of this in this video. I don't know why. But anyway, let's move on to the spells here. Um, and I'll start with the removal. It's pretty important that we play removal in a mid-range deck. There's not a ton of aggro in the format, but we are in a pretty interesting format right now. There's some aggro, there's some control, there's some mid-range. It's a pretty, you know, diverse format right now. So we want to pack a fair amount of removal not only to deal in the early game with those, you know, smaller creature-based decks, but also to help out Kalidus in the mid to late game. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to play four copies of Harness Lightning and two copies 
of Unlicensed Disintegration, along with two copies of Radiant Flames. Radiant Flames is obviously just good main deck mass removal against all the very small based creature decks um, that play like Reckless Bushwhacker and a bunch of one drops. Radiant Flames is just my, just blows them out. So play a couple of those main deck and then save room for one on the board as well. Unlicensed Disintegration is there because I think it's a little bit better than Murder. Um, not quite strictly. It depends on, you know, what kind of mana we're packing. But it is, you know, the right kind of speed. It's instant speed. Um, and it's Unconditional Creature Kill that if we have a Cultivator's Caravan or a Noxious Gear Hulk out, we'll do an extra three. So I just kind of like it better than Murder on principle. Um, and as far as Harness Lightning goes, this is just really flexible. Fantastic that it's instant speed can take out Smuggler's Copter on curve and sometimes can take out a smaller guy and help fuel our Aether Hub. So really flexible piece of removal that everybody's playing right now and I'm going to jump on board. I think that Lightning is probably a little bit better than Grasp because of the mana requirement and the fact that it can fuel Aether Hub as well. But, you know, Grasp can take out things like Avacyn even if she's got her indestructibility on. So there are definitely arguments for Grasp, but I like Harness Lightning a little bit better right now, especially considering we're mostly worried about Smuggler's Copter turn two. And I'll leave the graphic up to finish off the spells here. We're going to play three copies of Oath of Nyssa and two copies of Painful Truce because another important thing in mid-range and control decks is to play some form of card advantage. Oath of Nyssa can hit something like 45 different cards in the deck, so that's pretty cool. Um, close to, I think it's 43 different cards if I'm not mistaken. Um, so that's pretty nice. You know, we play nine Planeswalkers and a bunch of creatures. Let's play Oath of Nyssa for just the one mana. That's nice. It's also nice on turn three to Cultivator's Caravan into Oath of Nyssa. That's a good play. Um, and then Painful Truce, just, you know, if we have all three mana out, or all three different kinds, draw three is just insanely powerful. And even if we just want to draw two cards with it, that's fine too. But drawing three for three mana, even if it hurts us a little, you know, we've got Kalidus in the deck, we'll be okay. Um, is just extremely powerful. Drawing three cards is fantastic, so yes. Here's the land base in the deck, and it's really not too hard to figure out. You know, it just kind of... It took a little bit of doing, but I knew we wanted to play four Aether Hub and four Ising Quagmire. The rest was sort of built upon from there. I also knew that we had to play Evolving Wilds because of Tireless Tracker and the fact that this is a three-colored deck. So everything else is just sort of built up from there according to how much mana we, we sort of needed. This, this, this mana base has been reworked a few times, but basically this is what we landed on, and I think this is right. I haven't had too many problems with this at all. Here's your sideboard here. This is another thing that's been reworked and reworked over and over. Now, we do want the Galvanic Bombardments against these small aggro decks. Very, very good card against them. Same thing with Radiant Flames. I want to sort of pad the deck against those decks with one more copy of Radiant Flames. Concoction in there against the Emrakul decks. And we're also packing one Emrakul in case we come up against, you know, something mid-range oriented. Don't necessarily know about Control because Control will sometimes pack Summary Dismissal. Um, and it's just more equipped in the late game to deal with an Emrakul. Um, and conversely, aggro will never play the Emrakul against, so I like it against mid-range only. Root Out is a self-explanatory card against the, um, the artifacts in the format right now. Smuggler's Copter, Aetherworks Marvel, whatever you're coming across. It's fine, and also has um, synergy out of the board with Tireless Tracker, so that's cool. And finally, the Ishkana are in there against mid-range and even sort of, you know, a little slower aggro decks, not necessarily the Reckless Bushwhacker ones, but the, you know, vehicle-oriented ones. Um, Ishkana can be very, very good against, and is good against Smuggler's Copter, like really good against Smuggler's Copter and Avacyn if we're playing against those decks. And, you know, a lot of times we are. Smuggler's Copter very popular, Avacyn very popular as well, so I like Ishkana. I just don't know that I want to go full tilt and devote the deck to Delirium um, and play like Traverse the Olven Wall, which, which could go in, but ultimately I decided to nix that decision and relegate the Ishkanas to the sideboard. But, you know, you could go back on that and put one or two in the main deck, and I would not be mad at you. And here are your power rankings. A final score of 68, which is a high score indeed. That is getting right up there to the very, very high end of things. People watching the channel for a while know that 70 is a fantastic score. So anything approaching that is very good. And sure, we're not great in every category. We don't care that much about synergy. We're not an incredibly fast deck, you know. But everything else, pretty good. We've got relatively good offense and defense, the hallmark of a Jun deck. So really, that's, that's the thing to look at is the offense and defense stats. Six and eight may not look incredible, but usually decks that are high in defense will be very low in offense. And the other way around, any deck that's high in offense will be pretty low in defense. So numbers that are both above average in, this, in these categories is something you don't see every day. And again, is the mark of a good Jund or just pure mid-range deck, period. 
The previous 10 to 15 minutes was the good news. This is the bad news. We're going to pay about $300 for this main deck. And then for the sideboard, we're going to pay an extra, another 50 or 60 bucks. So we're looking at like anywhere between 350 or 360 to build this deck right now. And that makes it the most expensive deck that I have built in a long time. Now, you could just watch these videos for entertainment. You could watch them to, for aspirational purposes. You know, I want to build this deck someday. Um, but this deck is mostly just for people who want to win because we're playing all of the best cards and the deck is very competitive. Picked me up a bunch of games in testing. As long as we can get into the mid game, our cards, nearly all of them, Tireless Tracker, Sylvan Advocate, Kalidus, nearly all of our cards will get better as the game extends. So we just put ourselves in a very good position the more turns we play. Now we are playing what I believe to be the best cards um, for this deck right now, but there were a bunch of cards that I cut, and here are some right here, over here, they'd be over here, I don't know why I'm pointing this way, they're over here. Um, but anyway, here are some of them right here. Um, but you know, if you have any questions about any of these cuts, let me know on the sideboard. Let me know what you would play instead, because the Jun color combination has a bunch of really good cards right now. There's actually a Jund aggro deck that looks nothing like this. That is actually posting fair results right now. It looks a little similar to the green black aggro deck I posted just like on super steroids. So, um, you know, let me know how you feel about this one. Anything you'd like to include that I didn't include. Anything you want to bust me on like, that's totally stupid. Even though I think this is actually one of the better decks I've made in a very long time. As far as the competitive decks that I've been making. So, let me know how you feel about it in the comments section. And I will be down to answer some things. I'm still doing this like, meh thing. I don't know why. I'm sorry about that. But um, anyway, that is all I've got for now, but pretty cool things are happening. By the time I post this video, or maybe shortly after, I should have 40,000 subscribers finally, and thank you for that. I will finally be pulling the trigger on this Q&A that I've been talking about forever, you know. If you have any questions that you want to send me for the Q&A, anything personal about me that you ever wanted to know, you know, any of that stuff, send them to this email address right here, strictlybetterm2g at gmail.com, all lowercase, that should be easy to remember. Just send me questions and I will answer them very, very soon in our 40k Q&A. So, I am really, really happy that we got there. You know I'm trying to make it to 50k before Christmas, but I don't want to, you know, just pass over 40 and not thank you guys, because you guys are awesome. If you haven't subbed yet, please do that, because we're trying to get to 200,000 for, you know, for all I know. But that's all for now. Next time, I'm going to finally be doing Red White Equipments, the other Red White Aggro deck in the format. And this one is a blast to play, and you can put it together for much cheaper than you can put the vehicles deck together. So stay tuned for that. going to be putting it out in just a couple of days. And... Stay tuned for our 40k Q&A and send me questions and things. So, anyway, I'll see you next time, guys. If you enjoyed the content, like the content, sub if you're new as usual, and I'm Deb from SBMTG. Thanks for watching, my wizards.